In this video, we're going to talk about graph complements and counting subgraphs. And these topics come up in the reading, so I just want to go over this mostly, state the definition, give you how I think about it that might be different from the way you'd see it in the reading. So we're going to talk first about the idea of the complement of a graph. So the complement of G, which is um, going to be denoted G bar, so we're using the same notation we use for sets, and it's going to be a graph with certain properties. It's going to have the same vertex set as G, but when we look at the edge set, the edge set is going to be all the two element subsets of the vertex set that are not in the edge set of the original graph. So in notation that looks really funny. So I think one way that's very helpful to think about this is in the context of an example. So here goes the first example. Let's take the following graph. Let's look at the graph G with vertex set 1, 2, 3, 4 and then edge set um, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, and 2, 4. So what we're going to do is draw a picture of it so you can see how this graph complement thing works out. This is a graph of G. You can see you have the edge 1, 2. We have the edge 2, 3, 2, 4, and 3, 4. So, when we build G complement, we're going to start with the same vertices. But now we're only going to draw in edges that don't appear in the original graph. So because in the original graph we have this edge from 1 to 2, I'm not going to put that in my new one. We're not going to put 2, 3 in. We're not going to put 2, 4 in. We're not going to put 3, 4 there are two edges we can put. Notice in the original graph, 1 and 3 were not connected. So now in the new graph, I am going to connect them. And in the original graph, 1 and 4 were not connected. Now I am going to connect them. A really interesting feature is that if you just took a different color, so like let's say I say pink is going to be edges in G bar, then drawing G bar over G is as simple as creating the remainder of a complete graph. So once I have everything connected, I notice that these pink parts, those are the G bar parts, and then the blue parts are the original graph. Together it gives you everything. Let's write out the vertex and edge set for G bar just so we have it. So when I look at G bar, it has the vertices 1, 2, 3, 4, just like G did, but the edges are the ones that weren't in the original. And together, notice we get six edges, and that should be no surprise, because if we look at the complete graph on four vertices, then it was supposed to have 4 times 3 divided by 2, or 6 edges. And notice there are 2 coming from G complement, and there are 4 in G bar, in, in the original G. And so together you're building the whole complete graph, and this is no surprise. Let's look at a second example though that maybe is a little more complex, and when it's laid out in a different way might seem different. So here it goes. I've recopied the definition over so that we have that graph complement definition in our minds. But now let's look at the example of the utility graph. Remember that's a fancy name, but it's just this graph where we have three vertices on the top, three vertices on the bottom, and every top vertex touches all the bottom three. But the top vertices don't touch each other, and the bottom three don't touch each other. So let's start thinking about what the edge and vertex set are here. The vertex set is going to be all six vertices A, B, C, X, Y, Z. For the edge set of the utility graph, we get this. 
we connect the vertex A to X, Y, and Z, getting three edges. We connect the vertex B here in the middle to X, Y, and Z, getting three edges. And lastly, we connect the vertex C to X, Y, and Z, getting three more edges. So notice there's nine total edges. Next, let's think about the complement. So first, I'm going to draw in the vertices only. So here are the vertices, and remember for the utility graph's complement, we want edges we didn't have before. So one edge that's not in the utility graph, well there's no edge connecting A and B in the original picture. There's also no edge connecting A and C. In the original graph, there's no edge connecting B and C. So notice now among vertices A, B, and C, everything is connected to each other, and they're not at all connected to the bottom, which is the opposite of what we saw before. Similarly, X can't connect to A, B, or C because it did before, but now I'm going to connect it to X, Y and Z, and then Y is already connected to X, but it also can get connected to Z, and now I see in the bottom that other part. So this new graph here, this is utility graph complement. How many edges does it have? I count one, two, three on top and one, two, three on bottom, so it has six edges. And of course, notice there are six possible vertices, and the number of edges in K6 was six possible edges times five over two. That's 15, and of course, the 6 from the graph complement plus the 9 from the original graph would have given us that 15, and that's no surprise. We know when we put the two graphs together, a graph and its complement make a complete graph. So there's that comment, and let's just highlight it for good measure. because it's a good way to check. And let's tack in one more thing. On the next slide, I'm going to show you the adjacency matrix for the utility graph and the adjacency matrix for its complement. And here below, I've put the adjacency matrix for the graph complement, so I know they're not quite the same size. So this is the adjacency matrix. For UG, and below it, this is for UG complement. Now it might be a little hard to see originally, but notice both of them have the same diagonal zeros because in any graph we're not going to have it connect an ed a vertex to itself. There's no edge from a vertex to itself in our definition of a graph. But everywhere else, You'll see, oh, notice there's a zero in the AB spot here. Here there's a one. There's a zero in the CZ spot in the, in the um, utility graph's complement. But in the CZ spot in the original graph, there's a one. And that is not for any reason of coincidence. It turns out that the adjacency matrix of a graph versus a graph complement will swap the role of ones and zeros except on the diagonal and that should make sense because we use these adjacency matrices to encode where graphs had edges or didn't, one meaning there is an edge, zero meaning there isn't between a pair. So now we're just reversing that in the complement. Well there was one before, now there won't be. So that would switch a one to a zero and vice versa.